is with tremendous pride and gratitude that, that my wife, my son, and I stand before you as, as your next head football coach. Um, I have so many people to thank. I'd like to first start with, with Temple's president, Dr. Dick Engel. You know, just, I, I haven't talked to him just once. I've talked to him twice. You know, he's, he's visited with me. He's visited with me on the phone. He shared what he's done here and what's going to happen in the future. I feel great about that, and I'm very grateful for, for to him for that opportunity. I want to thank the incoming president, Dr. Theobald, who, who flew in to, to visit with me. And, and I left that meeting. I went into that meeting knowing I wanted this job, knowing I love these players, I love this school. And I left so excited about what's going to happen at this university moving forward under his guidance and under the guidance of so many other people. I want to thank Bill Bradshaw. I want to thank Bill Bradshaw for giving me this opportunity. You know, he, he turned me down two years ago. And he was right. He made the right decision two years ago. I told him, because I, I wasn't ready then, but I'm ready now. I want to thank him and his staff because they treated me with dignity and respect every step of the way. I want to thank the entire Temple University community, the Board of Trustees, everyone that works in this school that is, that is here today, that isn't here today, that has made this place such a, a wonderful place to be. We're going to come back and we're going to, we're going to do great things together. I want to thank the over 39,000 students at this school and on all these campuses. I want to thank the over 280,000 Temple alumni. I want to thank everybody that's involved with this school because... We're going to do this together with you. Okay, my wife and I and our son, we consider ourselves temple people. We didn't go to school here, but we're temple made. Every decision we've made in our lives, in our career, in our, in our recent lives, has been revolved around this university. I have some other people I'd like to thank um, before I talk about what's going to happen next. I want to thank the temple football program. I want to thank the, te the, the temple players. I want to thank the former players, so many of whom over the last years I've gotten to know. I'm so excited to be your guys' football coach. I can't promise you much. I can't promise you much, but I'm going to promise you one thing as I stand here in front of you today. That I'm going to give you guys the same commitment, the same trust, the same respect, the same level of work ethic that we as a university demand from you. You can trust what I tell you. I'm going to push you like crazy and we're going to win together. Cody Blue's laughing at me because he already knows. So. <laughs> There's so many, some, some other people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank Al Golden for bringing me here six years ago. I'd like to thank Steve Adagio for keeping me here two years ago. I'd like to thank Coach Cheney. I, I, I've never really met Coach Cheney, but, I, but Coach Cheney came in and, and talked to our team a couple years ago, and I'm going to give you just the, uh, the, the PG version, the, the stand-up <laughs> version. But it was, it, was, it was John Cheney who stood there and talk, told us about Temple Tufts. See, a lot of people think a lot of people made up Temple Tough. John Cheney said Temple Tough to us, and he told us what it meant. And it was at that moment that I believe in that first run that I was here that our program changed, that we began to, to move forward and understand, hey, this is what makes us special. This is what makes our program unique, that we're going to be different. We're going to spell tough even a little bit different. And if anyone wants to talk to me afterwards, I'll tell you how he taught us that. <laughs> you know, there, there's some rules about when you get a, a head coaching job, you know, you get up and you say, I want to thank my wife. She's the greatest coaching wife in the world. She travels around with me. And that just would... That would just absolutely not do my wife justice. My wife isn't a coach's wife. Uh, I'm her husband. My wife is a tremendous woman. Okay, she's been she's been my friend for years. She is a temple person through and through. See, when you come somewhere and you you stay somewhere and you work really hard, it's because you're invested. My wife, even as we went to New Jersey, she said, I'll, I'll go to New Jersey. I'm not going here, I'm not going there, but I'll go to New Jersey this past year because she wanted to continue to work at Temple. She wouldn't let me sell our house. She drives, you, know, she's, you can see she's pregnant. She probably, she probably doesn't want you to see, but my wife's pregnant. <laughs> but even as we move to a new place and my wife is, is carrying our, our next child, she, she gets in the car two to three days a week and comes down here and, and works in the dining hall, works on campus because she's invested in this campus. She loves the students here. I want to also go on to, to announce kind of my first hire. Really important that I say this. I want to announce that I'm going to hire Bryant Rule. It's going to be the uh, first hire of the staff. He's going to be the official ball boy. We didn't, we didn't tell Bryant that we had accepted the job until this morning when we got in the car. We didn't want to, you know, just, you know, sometimes you're that age, we didn't want to disrupt anything. So he had two questions. Number one, what does a head coach do? <laughs> and I've got another great answer. <laughs> and, and number two, are we going to get to see Hooter? So, we're going to get him to see Hooter today. I want to thank my... 
I want to thank my parents, both of whom came here. You know, this, we said this was going to be a family affair. My parents are here. My dad has stood on the sidelines for many Temple games. Um, he's heard some of you guys cheer. He's heard a lot of you guys yell at me. And he's always, always been there with me along the way. My mom and dad, who I love greatly. I want to thank Julie's father, who's here today. Uh, he's, he's been... He's been such a, a tremendous part of our lives and, and would not would not go to the Giants games this past year and was happy to come back and come to the Temple game. I would be remiss if I didn't say that, that Julie's mother passed away this year and she would have wanted nothing more than to be here this day. So thank you very much for, for them for being here. Um, you know, sometimes you take a new job and you don't thank where you came from. So if you'll bear with me, if all the Eagles fans in here will bear with me, I want to take a moment to thank the New York Giants organization. Um, starting at the very top, the mayor and the Tisch families, they run probably the greatest sports organization, uh, one of the great professional sports organizations. <laughs> Every moment of my, my year this year was first class. They're, they're first class people. I want to thank Jerry Reese, the general manager of his scouting department. I didn't know what it was like to make decisions and be a leader until I sat in the draft room. With the clock running down and everyone giving their opinion and one person has to stand up and say, no, this is what we're going to do and I'm going to live with this decision. They taught me a lot. Something that as I come back as a head coach and you handle recruiting decisions, I hope I can emulate his leadership style. I want to thank the coaches. This year was like a PhD in offensive football for me. I was embarrassed at how much I didn't know and how much they knew. It's been a, tr a tremendous, tremendous year for me to learn from those coaches. Pat Flaherty, Kevin Gilbride Sr., and so many more. I want to thank the players. You know, whether you're a Giants fan or an Eagles fan, one thing I'll tell you about NFL football is this. I had no idea, and football is my life, I had no idea what professional football players go through every week to get themselves ready to play. How much pain, 10, 12 years of injuries, how, how much pain they have to play through every day. So I appreciate them. And then finally, I want to thank Tom Coughlin. I said I wasn't ready two years ago, and I benefited greatly from a year with Steve, but I really benefited as well from a year with Tom Coughlin. A tremendous leader. A man that's won at every level. A Hall of Fame coach. Super Bowl coaches. A man that taught me how to handle situations when they're tough. A man that, when my wife was sick before our first game, defending Super Bowl champion, new coach, not even sure if he, how much he knows my name. We're getting ready to play the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Thursday night football. The whole world is watching and my wife gets sick. And he stops everything he's doing and says, get out of here, go home. Get out of here and go home. I said, coach, I have to do this during the game. I have to. He says, no, no, get out of here and go home. Take care of your family. Then it's only Coach Coughlin that he said, I think we'll be just fine without you. So. <laughs> But a great leader and a great man, and I'm very grateful to all of them for, being, for, for allowing me to be here. It's been a tremendous journey for me to get to this point. You know, Bill, Bill mentioned that we got here six years ago or uh, seven years ago, but it was about seven years ago, I guess, that my wife and I were working in Cullowee, North Carolina. Our son had just been born. We were at Western Carolina University. Now Golden got the Temple job, and a lot of people assume I knew Al, but I didn't know Al. He had been at Penn State. I had been at Penn State. But I knew this was going to be a great place. I knew this was a place that I wanted to be, and I knew he would win here. So my wife, my newborn son and I, two dogs and a cat, got in the car, drove the 11 hours on our way home to see our parents, and stopped, okay, stopped at the corner of 10th and Diamond. Got out, went in, saw Nadia, I pronounced her name wrong at the time, I called her Nadia, she corrected me very quickly, and I told Nadia I wanted to see Al Golden. And I told Al Golden I wanted to work with him, and I told him why. He listened to me that day, he called me 30 days later, and says, I want you to come here. It was... Five years, but five great years. Sometimes I think I can still feel the, the dirt underneath, not just mine, but all of our fingernails. Great men. Ed Foley, Andrew Dees, Tyree Foreman. Guys that worked tooth and nail. Mark D'Onofrio, uh, Mike Sorabo. Guys that fought their tails off for five years to get this program to where we wanted to be. To back-to-back to -back bowl eligible seasons. And then it was after that year that the staff left. And I wanted to be the head coach. And I interviewed with Bill, and they were gracious to me, and I, I did the best I could, and I didn't have that opportunity. So I went from having a chance to be the head coach at Temple to jobless. I had no job. I was standing there in the offices, and my wife's calling and saying, what are we going to do next? I said, honey, I don't know. And Steve Adagio came in and said, I want to give you, I want to give you an opportunity. Now, if I was a couple years younger, I probably would have pouted and said, you know, I, you know, I should have been the head coach. I'm not doing it. He said, oh, you're going to have to take an emotion. No, I, I, I shouldn't do it. But I looked at those kids, these kids over here, guys that sometimes hated me, sometimes loved me, and I said to myself, you know what? This is the right place for us. These guys are the right people for us, and we're going to be loyal to them. And we stayed. And I, I grew as a coach that year. I got a, I got, uh, I got a chance to, to experience that Urban Meyer system, a different way of doing things. We built on what we had done with Al. We, we changed it and improved it with Steve. It was, it was a great year, and it culminated in, on that field in Albuquerque, New Mexico. My wife 
My son and I stood off to the side as the guys were up there. Guys that had gone through, really had gone through hell. I remember more Keith Brown, a guy who had gone through hell, a guy who had been thrown off, come back, thrown off, been to, been, been to Afghanistan. I mean, just a, just a true story. Standing there holding up that trophy. I remember putting my arm around my wife and saying, you know what, I don't know if we'll be here next year. It feels like, it feels like we've completed this cycle. We've, we've done what we came to do. We've done what we came to do. So we went to the Giants. The guys, like I said, a PhD in football. And now we're back here. Now we're back here. You know, it was during this year that I realized how much I wanted to be here. I remember sitting there watching the South Florida game, watching you guys come back at the end. I, I, I was just overcome with emotion. You guys won the game, and, and then the referee called a, a, a whatever, illegal contact or a late hit. Someone hit the quarterback in the face, and they had another chance. And you guys went down, and you found a way to win. You blocked that field goal. And my wife and I are crying in Ridgewood, New Jersey, watching these guys win that game. Then I was on the plane, and I got off, and I saw that they beat UConn. Just, just the joy that I felt. And then it was the Army game this year. My wife, Brian... We went up and we saw the team. And I had a chance. Steve, Steve, in his way, said, hey, why don't you come up and say something to the team? And I got up in front of the team. And I looked out at those faces. And I said, that's my team. Those are my guys. That's my team. Those are my guys. If he ever leaves, I want to be there. I want to be there. I shook every guy's hand on that, on that team. I went to the game the next day. I hung out with the parents, yelled about the play call, and yelled about the, yelled about the coaches, yelled about everything. Like I always wanted to try. But it was in that moment that I knew that if this opportunity ever came, I was going to fight for it. Not just apply for it, but fight for it. And we did. But you know, today, today is really not about me. It's, it's not about Matt Rule. It's not about Julian Bryant. Well, today's about Temple. Today's about one of the nation's premier comprehensive public universities. Today's about coming back to this campus just a year later and seeing everything that's happening here. Seeing where there was once a hole in the ground, now there's a, a super dorm. It's about, it's about all the great things that have happened, not only during my years here, my, my, my five or six years here, but what's happening right now. Today's also about 57 cents. Today's about 57 cents. Now, I'll, I'll probably leave you with this story, and I'll talk a little bit about football, but some people probably know this story. It's a story of Hattie Mae Wyatt. But Hattie Mae Wyatt was a little girl that used to go to church here in, uh, uh, in North Philadelphia, and one day she was crying outside the church. She couldn't get in. And Russell Conwell walked up and he said, well, What's wrong, little girl? And, and Hattie said, I can't, get into, I can't get into the Sunday school. It's, it, it's, there's, it's not big enough. There's too many people in there. And Russell Conwell, in his way as a teacher and a leader and a minister, picked him up on his shoulders and carried her in. And that little girl that, that day knew there was a problem. So she started saving her money, pennies at a time. Pennies at a time. And it wasn't long after that she, she passed away. She contracted diphtheria and, and passed away. This is a true story. Passed away. And her father took everything that she had saved to Russell Conwell, 57 cents. And said to Russell Conwell, that my daughter saved this money because she thought we need to build a new Sunday school. It wasn't long after that Russell Conwell took that 57 cents. And when they built the Baptist temple at Broad and Burks, that was the first down payment used, 57 cents. 57 cents was the first down payment on that building, the forerunner of what we now call Temple University. See, 57 cents spurned years and years of growth. 57 cents motivated people to give of themselves. 57 cents, a small act by a little child, grew from there. As I stand here today, I'm happy to be here, but it's, it's about so much more than me. It's about the entire Temple family. Guys who long ago put their 57 cents in. Wayne Harden. Bruce Arians, all the Temple players. I was on the field yesterday in Atlanta. I was talking to Keith Armstrong, former Temple alum. He's one of the best special teams coaches in the NFL. He's telling me stories about, about uh, living, living, uh, living in Johnson and Hardwick and all the things that they did and how he watches the program now. He put his 57 cents in, and all he's doing now is handing it to me, handing it to us. Those guys gave so much. The guys that were here during the time I was here, one of my great statuses in life is guys like Adam DeMichael during my time never got the put a trophy in that building. And I left, and I never got Adam to Michael a championship trophy. I never got Bruce Francis a championship trophy. I never got so many of those guys a championship trophy. That's what we're here to do today. We're going to build a program with integrity. We're going to build a program that everybody here can be proud of. We're going to build a program where our kids not only graduate, I don't want them just to graduate, I want them to do what I did. I have two degrees because of football. I have two degrees because football gave me that opportunity. 
My mom's looking at me like, and my mom. Okay, but my mom and football gave me access to two degrees. We want our men not only come here and graduate with a piece of paper, we want them to be educated. We want them to contribute to the university community. We want them to be people that everybody here can be proud of. 57 cents. Moving forward football-wise, we have a lot of work to do. We have a tremendous opportunity moving into the Big East. Started this year. We have access to a BCS opportunity each and every year. That's within our control. Like I started the thing out to begin with. Okay, before you can be great anywhere else, be great right here. We're going to try to be great right here first. We're going to take care of our team and watch all the great things that will happen moving forward. All the great things that will happen moving forward. We have a lot of work to do. I'm going to balance my responsibilities as a coach with the Giants to finish out the season while I also work on my head coaching duties, filling the staff out. Uh, right now it's a dead period in recruiting, so I can't be out on the road, but continue to, to build the recruiting. And most importantly, really taking care of our current roster and our current team, making sure that we, you know, most of these guys know me, they know pretty much what to expect, they know who I am, but just making sure that our team, as they've gone through this transition, is taken care of. You know, as you look at the program, I, here, here's what I believe about football. Okay, just the football part of it. Football is a pretty simple thing. Coaches stand up here and they make it sound like they've got a coach. Here's what it is. You recruit the best fit for your program. You recruit the best guys you can get. The best players, the best students, the best people you can get. Then you develop them like crazy. That's not easy. That's not easy to develop guys. But you know what? We have developed guys. That's why there are... You realize in the National Football League right now, there are seven or eight Temple defensive linemen that were here in a four or five period, four or five year period. Guys that other people maybe didn't recruit, some they did recruit. There are eight defensive linemen playing in the National Football League. Not because they were big time recruits, but because they were developed. We're going to recruit the best, we're going to develop them the best, and they're going to play the best brand of football that we can play. Living up to what we've done before, living up to being Temple Tough, but we're going to try to add something to it to, to take us to the next level. Thank you again for everybody for being here. If, if I forgot anything, I know you guys are going to have a ton of questions, and, and um, I look forward to, to work with everybody each and every day. I, you know, guys that know me know that that uh, I, I try to give you the best answer I can. But thank you on behalf of my wife, my son, and I. We are so very happy to be here, so very happy to be started. Uh, we didn't sell our house last year, so we're just going to take our stuff, move back into our house. Brian's going to go back into his old school. And, uh, and uh, I guess the only difference is now I just changed my office, which office I have. <laughs> thank you very much. John DeCarlo, I'll scoop that John. Uh, you mentioned the story about coming up here and talk to Al, and a lot of coaches have come and gone through here, and they don't really become engaged with Temple. Where, where did you kind of catch the bug and really like fall in love with this place and really become as attractive as you are with Temple? Well, I, I think it's I think it's a, a lot of reasons. The first thing is is you know um, I would say the first thing is, is is that we like living in the city. I mean. And that, that's, that's a legitimate thing for us. I mean, we, we've lived in Los Angeles, we've lived in Atlanta, and when we came here, you know, we've never, we've never uh, really kind of been like wanting to go live in a, a, a college town. So we came here and we liked the opportunities that that afforded us for our lifestyle. The second thing was that my wife started to work here, and she, she, she's good at what she does and she likes what she does. So as you lay roots, you know, people don't love Philadelphia just because it's a great town. There's lots of great towns. You love Philadelphia because it's your home. You know what I mean? You don't love Temple just because it's a great school. You love Temple because it's your school. There's lots of great schools. This is our school. This is our... So for us, we just we built a home here. We raised our son here. He doesn't know anything else. Um, so I just, I just kind of never really realized why I had to move around too much. There were times where I had opportunities to leave. And there was one time I went to my wife and there was a BCS school offered me a job. And I said, listen, I have this opportunity. They're going to pay us this. We're going to do this. What do you think? And she said, I think you're going to love it there. So, and that's a, true story. that's a true story. So, you know, I, I just think that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, everyone loves their home. You know what I mean? You know, we built our home here. We've raised our family here. We're going to add to our family here. So, that's really it. I can't give you a better answer than that. Hey, I'm Tom Maloney, KYW Radio. Um, you'll be recruiting now as a head coach. And when you do that and you're in the home, of a young man with his parents, and you're getting a positive response from all of them. Uh, and the question comes to you, will you still be there when I'm a senior? What do you say to them? That's a, that, that's a great question. I think the first thing you do is 
you, you don't give the um, the head coach answer that the people give, you know, like, well, I plan on being, I, I think what you do is you say, if it's within my power, and this is what I mean, if it's within my power, I'm going to be here as your head football coach. If it's within my power, I mean, if Bill doesn't decide to make, make a change, I'm going to be here as your head football coach. And if that's not true, if that's not true, then I think you have to say the opposite. But for, for me, for my family as the head coach, that that's true. I mean, we, we, we signed, uh, I, I said to Bill, I said, Bill, I'll, I'll sign a 10-year contract, a 20-year contract. And he wasn't willing to give me that contract. <laughs> but but in, in all seriousness, I think that, I think that, I mean, aren't we kind of all, I mean, anybody could ask me any questions, and I could give you any answer. You know what I mean? The same thing, they could, I could give you any answer. I think you have to actually look at the reasons why you plan on staying there, you know? And so that's... That's all I can say is, yes, I'm going to be here. I want to be here and tell them why. And I think as parents in recruiting, there's a lot of parents in here of people that I recruited that have been around us in recruiting. You know, parents and, and recruits are pretty smart. You know, they know when you're giving them the head coach answer or when you're giving them a real answer. So the way we've always recruited at Temple has been to allow them to get to know us and get to know this universe, not to try to convince them of anything, not to say, hey, this is this, but just say, come, take a look, see what we have here, see who we are. So... I think as the parents get to know myself, as they get to know Julie, as they get to know Brian, they realize that this really is our home, that this is where we're going to be, and we're going to be there as long as we can. So. Hey, Coach Marshall Harris, Comcast Sportsnet. Uh, in terms of recruiting and the, the current climate of college football and realignment, how, how do you talk to uh, potential kids, and even the kids that you have now, about where Temple is headed? because we really don't know, just based on what we've seen the last few years. That's a great question. I think um, I think you have to talk about Temple in a lot of ways. Uh, with regards to what you're saying, um, I would say that at the end of the day, the way we've set up the new structure is we're, we're in a conference that plays a tremendous schedule and plays a national schedule. So kids are going to get exposure all across the United States. We're not just a, a regional power anymore. We have a chance to go across the country and play. And I would say that most people here know, know knew who Boise State starting quarterback were the last four years. They knew that Kellen Clemens was out there and was doing great things. So um, we have a chance to play on a national stage. We have a chance to play in a championship game every year. Okay. That's something that hasn't been, you know, ha hasn't been afforded to us uh, until very recently. So we have a chance to play in a championship game, we have a chance to play a national schedule, and we have access to a BCS conference. And so that's been proven this year. What was denied to people before was access, and now we have access. Um, is, it, is it the way that other people have it? I don't know, but we have it. And so that's all we want is an opportunity. But I think the, the, the greater message that I'm going to want to send to people recruiting-wise is because... It sounds good to say where you're going in terms of, well, I have this opportunity, they can go to this bowl game here. But how many of those schools in that conference are actually going to that bowl game? We're really talking about two or three probably in every conference at the, most, at the end of the day. So if I'm a young man, I'm trying to decide what school I'm going to, I always just put it like this. Where are you going to be in four or five years if you come here? Where are you going to be in four or five years if you're going to go there? Not just bowl game-wise, not just champion, not just ranking-wise, but who's going to develop you the best? Who's going to develop you the best academically, socially? Who's going to give you the greatest, the better experience? When, you know, I went to a, a great college. I had a chance to play football at Penn State. It was a wonderful experience. But I didn't have the opportunities that our kids have here. College football right now is a 365-day-a-year is a, is a -a enterprise. I mean, you're here all summer long. If you're a business major, you couldn't, you couldn't do a, an internship there. If you're, a, if you're a marketing major, if you're, if you're in uh, uh, the medical field, if you're in any of those fields, I see guys here, guys that are in, in medicine, they're going to you know, gonna decide between playing pro football or going to medical school or when I want to do what. So they're sitting right here. They have access to internships, to networking, to marketing that you don't have at some of those very same schools. So those same schools are going to sit here and say, hey, we have a guaranteed this, we have a guaranteed that. And I'm going to say, are they going to make it, first of all? Are they going to win that, that conference? And then secondly, are they going to develop you the way we've developed you? What way we have a track record of putting people in the NFL? We have 10 in the NFL right now. That, this is just in terms of pro football. 10 in the NFL right now, 13 that are on rosters. Are they going to win the way we've won, the way we're going to continue to win? I think all those things are how you recruit somebody. Because when you send your son somewhere, or when you come somewhere as a student athlete, at the end of the day, all that really matters is when you walk out of here and you have your, your one or two degrees what your experience was like, and who you've become. You know what I'm saying? What your experience, did I like it? Did I have fun? And who am I now? Did I get developed into a great player, or am I just kind of a good player on a really good team? Did I, did I get developed my skill set by coaches that were invested in me, or was this just kind of a football factory? We roll up our sleeves here. You know what I mean? We roll up our sleeves. We make kids become the best that they can be, and that's why we've been successful at it. 
Yes, uh, my name is Donald Hunt from the Philadelphia Tribune. So, along the lines of recruiting now, how important is it going to be for you to get the kids from the Philadelphia Public League and Catholic League here? I mean, for example, you know, can you keep the Sharif Floyds from going to Florida and the Deion Barnes from going to Penn State since you're a Penn State guy? And, um, you know, the Corey Browns from going to, you know, Ohio State. And, and you know, since you know, Temple's a Philadelphia school, I mean, just give me your thoughts on that. It's a great question. You know, I think that everything we do recruiting wise will always start right here. We'll always start right here, you know, in our footprint, and, and really right here within the city, within the city itself. So, um, my philosophy is going to be this: we are going to recruit, recruit, and relentlessly recruit everybody within this one-hour radius. I mean, everybody, no matter, no matter, you know, what offers they have, who they you know, who else is recruiting them. We're going to, we're going to recruit them. Harder than everyone else. If at the end of the day, they decide they want to go somewhere else, if that's what's best for them, because sometimes that might be what's best for you, then that's all we want. We want people that come here that are the right fit. But, if, you know, my philosophy, my purpose in this, my role as the, as the head coach in recruiting is not one of those kids should say to you or should say to me, they, well, they just recruited me harder. You know, they recruited me harder. They wanted me more. They, 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 they did it in a better way than you guys did. So can we keep those kids here? Yeah, we're going to keep those kids here. We're going to keep all of them here? No. No, but we're going to keep the ones that we can, you know, that we can keep. And we'll, the way we're going to do it is we're going to show them what's here. You know, it has been amazing to me in my time as a recruiting coordinator how many people, Temple people even, that are from within an hour of here hadn't been back here in my first tip, stint as recruiting coordinator, my six years that I was here. How many people within an hour of here hadn't actually been on campus? And that was actually a plus. Saying, I know you haven't been here for 20 years, but why don't you come down here now? I know you haven't been here for 10 years. Come down here now. And as those people came back and saw what was here, and more importantly, saw our guys. So all we have to do to recruit is let them meet our guys. And once they meet our guys, okay, there's, there's a Philly guy right here. You know, uh, uh, he could have gone a lot of places. As a matter of fact, remember him calling me the night before signing day saying, I think I might go somewhere else. And I'm gonna, we'll talk about that once I'm the head coach and everything signed. We'll, we'll, we'll make amends for them, you know, what happened uh, two years ago. Uh, in, in winter conditioning or off-season program or something like that. So, but no, he's a great kid. And he had lots of opportunities, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, his mom wanted to come see his games. She wanted to step, jump on the step and come down and watch him play, or she wanted to jump on the, uh, the, the, the subway and come down Rossi and watch him play. His high school teammates wanted to watch him play. His coaches wanted to watch him play. They wanted to do films in the morning and come over at 1 o'clock and watch him play. And they're watching him play right now. So. John Marston, Metro, you, you touched on this earlier about uh, two years ago you said you weren't ready yes, for this if you got in and, and uh, two years later, what's changed? Why are you not ready then? Why are you ready now? Uh, that's a great question. I would say, uh, number one, my experience uh, with Steve Adagio, with, you know, he, um, the great thing about what, what, what Coach did was he kept the infrastructure that we had built under Al, um, you know, with all with the coaches that had been there, because there we had some great coaches that came through during Al's five years, and lots of guys, you know, really, really, I, th I felt like built it the right way, built it with stability, built it on solid rock, built it with integrity. Um, and so what Steve did, he didn't come in and wipe it all out. Uh, Steve came in and looked at what was in place, looked at what guys like Ed Foley and Tyree Foreman had, had built and said, okay, I want to change these things. I want to bring this system that we ran under Urban Meyer at Florida. I want to bring this in, this part of it in. And so um, we were able to do that. You know, I'll, I'll remind everybody that in, in, our, in our last two years without, we were – we were eight and two and nine and two and ranked like in the top. We were like in the top 27, 28, 29. And both those years, we just we weren't able to finish the year out. You know, we went from eight and two, we went from nine and two to nine and four, and eight and two and eight and four. But we were there, and that's part of growing a program. Like you don't, it's not pro football where you get a couple free agents and all of a sudden you make that change. It's a, it's a, it's a procedure where you teach your kids how to win, and then you teach them how to compete for championships, and then you teach them how to finish the season, and then you teach. So in, in Steve's first year, we were nine and four bowl game win, but everyone should remember we were five and four. We were five and four before we were nine and four. And under that year, under that realm, what we were able to do, in my opinion, was finish the season. Finish the season. So um, I learned from those two things, while at the same time always maintaining in my you know my own views on it. And then I went and worked for Tom Coughlin. I went and worked for the Giants. And I don't think that you do what he did at Boston College and then do what he's done at both Jacksonville and the New York Giants without having a system. You know, he's, he's unflappable. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't, uh, other than the, I guess the sidelines, you, get, you know, every once in a while on TV, you know, he, he, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, ever show weakness. You know what I mean? He, he, 
he, he locks his door and says, okay, what am I going to do to figure this out? I'm not going to worry about what just happened. I'm going to fix it. And I've watched that for years. I've watched, I've watched great assistant coaches. I've watched, uh, you know, uh, Kevin Gilbride and Perry Few and all these guys. And I've said to myself, well, when I get a chance to do this, this is what I'm going to do. So I've been trying to build for this job for a long time. This is what I'm going to do from this. This is what I'm going to do from this. This is what I'm going to do from this. And now it's all full circle and I present the plan to, to, the, to the committee. Rock Hoffman, Football Stories Magazine. How gratifying is it to you that the players went to Bill and said, we want you back? You know, that was, um, that was probably as, uh, I think I said to one person, I said, you know, hearing some of the things that were said were probably better than actually getting, you know, better than getting the job. You know, because, because you feel like you get the job the right way. And the one thing I want to make sure, and these guys will tell you is, you know, I'm probably a pretty intense, discipline-oriented guy. You know what I mean? Like, you, as you kind of look at that, you kind of think like, "Well, you like, I'm gonna come back and you know, we're high fiving each other, and we're, you know." But I, I am. You know, I was raised a certain way. By my dad's a coach, and and my uncle's in the Pennsylvania State Football Coaches Hall of Fame, and 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 I played for Coach Paterno, and I, I, you know, was here for the, with this building. So I, I was raised a certain way as a coach, and that was, you know. You know, my eyes are my eyes, my yeses are my yeses, my nos are my nos. We're going to do it a certain way, you know, and that's how we do. So, to hear them know who I am, know that I believe in these things, believe in hard work and toughness and discipline, but also believe in having fun and, and being one of them at times, and also being who I am. To know that they felt that way was really gratifying to me, and told me it was the right time that they that they that they understood that. And, and some of the things that some of those guys said, you know, even there's some guys that, that send me text messages that you know never never really played their career didn't end up the way they wanted it to and I think when you get something from a guy like that that tells you you know what this is a special place and that is as much as anything the connection I have with Temple is, is, is these guys. Matt, you mentioned you got a PhD in offensive football from the Giants. What, what specifically did you learn in this past year and being at the organization? What, what do you what do you take from that? Well, I, you know, um, as I looked at the opportunity, you know, it was it was. Uh, like take for example, our offensive coordinator, uh, 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 Coach Gilbride, and he he has been with five organizations on in, in in four of those five or five of those five. I can't remember when he was the head coach. So every stop he's been as an offensive coordinator in National Football like he still owns every major offensive record at that place. So like he was at Buffalo, and everybody remembers Jim Kelly and the K gun and all those things. Every major you know yardage thing like that offensive record there, he, you know he, he still owns. He's succeeded at every level in the NFL. So I would think in terms of the passing game, in terms of the protection you know, game, um, I've really, really tried to soak in everything I can and learn from that. So that's, that's really what I mean. I mean, at the end of the day, you believe in running the football, and everyone, everyone wants to run the football. But you win at the end. You win championships. You win in crunch time with your ability to throw the football, whether it's two-minute, whether it's third down, whether it's games on the line. When the game's on the line, Everybody, the quarterback's going to have the ball in his hands. You know what I mean? He's got to go make something happen. So um, watching that be taught, watching that be taught each and every day has been kind of what I've tried to tried to take the most from. And that, that's really what I mean. This will be our last question. My credit on Newsday. Matt, when you didn't get the job two years ago, most people don't get a second chance. What did you think you were going to get another opportunity for this? You know, I... I I don't think that I did. I never thought about it, you know, um, other than other than um, the people that, that ran that search and the people, you know, uh, uh, you know, Bill Bradshaw, Sharita Freeman, uh, Joe Junta, Mark Ingram, the people that are the athletic administration, uh, people that were here before, Eric Rodell and Herm Frazier, you know, they were always very upfront with me. There was no, you know, I was very upfront with them. There was no secrecy. There was, they were just, they were just, they just ran it with integrity and it was run the right way. So on the first time I gave everything I had, they listened to everything I had, and they said, hey, this, that's not what we're doing now. And and when Steve gave me the opportunity to stay, not a lot of coaches would have done that. Hey, you, you know, you, you ran for the job, you finished second, I would like you to stay on my staff. But he did that. So I would say the reason I got a second opportunity is because there's a lot of good people here. You know, there, there's a lot of good people that, that gave me the opportunity to stay. Um, and, you know, fortunately, I, I made a couple good decisions to, to, to do it the right way and really enjoy myself, and the players responded to that. And, and um they were willing to give you a chance this time. So, you know, I would, you know, at the end of the day, everyone gets a break. You say, how did I get a break? I got a great break because some, some really good people, some really good people gave me a break. And uh, now what you do is, just like I talked about 57 cents, how, how do you repay them? You, know, you stand here and say, thank you, thank you, Bill. You know, thank you, sure. You can say thank you, but you do that by going out and rolling up your sleeves and 
working your tail off and working your tail off the right way, which is which is what we've done here before and what we will continue to do. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, everyone.